Hey everyone, it's Nick with NJ Valenti Art, and today I want to go over the big Affinity announcement. So let's jump right in. All right, so first off, Affinity is now free. Um, you can download it right at affinity.studio. Um, and then if you scroll down, it'll give you a little bit more information about it, vector, pixel, layout, all of that. So taking a look at the, uh, the graphic design aspect of it, um, what would have been you know, Affinity Designer version three, um, if we scroll down here, um, you know, they're talking about responsive tools, real-time flow, um, non-destructive workflows, precision. So a lot of the stuff looks like, um, you know, some of the stuff we've seen before um, and the stuff that we're fairly familiar with as far as Affinity Designer goes. Um, I think some of the more interesting uh, features, they do mention here they have a image trace now available, which um, was a very popular um uh, request by a lot of people. So it's good that they've included that. Another one that they have added that I'm actually very excited about is um, they've did some updates to their fill tool and there is now a gradient mesh tool which I think is really neat and is always something I've kind of wanted to be able to push um, the gradients a little bit more. Again designed non-destructively. Um, their raster features still work perfect with the, um, the vectors. And you've got like over 10 million zoom um, on vector and whatnot. So very, very cool, uh, very typical of Affinity Designer and whatnot. So um, let's go ahead and start looking at some of these features a little bit closer. All right, so let's explore the layout a little bit. Um, I've got Affinity open now. And what we could go, go ahead and do is we'll come up to File, New. So this is what our new document section will look like in choosing um, whatever size we want. You have your document settings over here where you can change um, the presets, so if you want transparent background, multiple artboards, image placement, and any of that you can control here in document settings, um, including changing the actual dimensions of the page. So they've got your basic layout, and then you'll be able to, you can switch between um, portrait or landscape. And then you'll be able to save your own in here as well. So we'll go ahead and we'll just select letter for now. All right, so with the new document open, I just want to go through um, some of the tools and whatnot. Up here at the top, you can see where we have our options now that it's an all-in-one app. We have Vector here, which would have been the designer persona. Pixel, which would have been the uh, pixel persona, where you could do our photo editing and such. And then the layout, which would have been the publisher persona. And you also have the option for Canva AI if you do have a pro subscription with Canva and you are interested in using their AI features. But back over here in Vector, we're going to go ahead and just look at some of the tools. We've got our Move tool, the Artboard tool. We can add, move, or resize the artboards. Our Node tool, Corner tool, Contour. Our favorite, the Pen tool. The Pencil tool, which also has in it the Path Brush tool and our Knife tool. We have their Stroke Width tool. Uh, the new fill tool, which they've added some, it's not the, it's not, the fill tool has been there, but they've added some new features to it, which I think are pretty cool, and I'm excited about the gradient mesh. Um, we have our transparency tool there. Under the rectangle tools, where we find all of our different shape options. We then have our shape builder tool, and the vector flood tool, our artistic text tool, and our other tools right in here. Now taking a quick look at the Pixel Persona, uh, we have again a lot of the same features that we've had before, Move Tool, Crop, Object Selection, Rectangle Marquee, our Fill Tool again, the Paintbrush Tool which still has our Symmetry options, if we come up here we have our Symmetry settings here that we can still use, um, the Erase Brush Tool, with your different options there, Adjustment Brush, Filter Brush Tool, Clone, in painting and the pen tool, so on and so forth. Um, I'm going to cover mainly vector and pixel since those are the two that I use the most in my workflow for illustration. Now, after using the place image tool and putting in this uh, PNG that I had here, there's a couple of cool features. Um, they have a tone map, which is pretty cool. Um, let's click on this to take a quick look. So it has to make it a raster layer, and then this will give you a different. Um, it separates all of the tones in the image a little bit. Um, you could go for a detailed view. So you can see how it really breaks apart those tones. You could change um, the contrast on those as well. 
you got tone compression and then a little contrast between the actual separation of the tones. They give you different options here, which could be further edited. So this might be a fun thing to play around with. We have um, various features over here. Another really cool feature that they have is the liquify tool. Um, again, with many options over here, um, if you wanted to twirl, um, push left, this is your forward tool. So you can see how we can manipulate the image using liquify now. Um, and we have all sorts of control over the tool itself. Um, and we can save and load as well with all of our options here. So some pretty cool features. Um, I'm really looking forward to diving into them. Um, again, we have our a gradient mesh tool that I'm really looking forward to using. Uh, and then also in Pixel Persona, we have a um, perspective tool, which I think will be really neat. I'll be breaking down each of the new features in their own separate videos. So don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell so you don't miss any of them. Until next time.